that's wonderful. Again, a very good, uh, I think, uh, not that afternoon. And so good morning to each one of you. And uh, thank you so much for, um, you know, for the praise, for the announcements, for the prayers. And uh, I must say that this technology has been a blessing to us uh, who are staying away uh, from Hyderabad and other places of India and even abroad you know for those of us who'd like to connect with you this is a blessing and it's uh, it's utmost important to us that we uh, that we see you guys and it just fills us with so much joy to connect with you in this way so without further ado um, today we are going to discuss a less touched a very needed but much to be practiced spiritual discipline now I had a hard time preparing for this particular Sunday, I think for the for the past two months. And every time I was prompted to take up this particular topic, I couldn't get the complete picture. Uh, it was as if it wasn't the right time. But this time when I prayed for guidance on what to share with the body of Christ, everything fell into place. And so Today, with the Lord's help, we'll unpack this particular topic together. But before even I do that, I want to begin by sharing a story. You know, there was once a very rich man who worked very hard in everything that he did. Now, he started with a humble beginning. And very soon, he discovered how to gain more riches. And so slowly, he became richer and richer. But he did not notice how he was changing as a person and how he started relating to his family as God blessed him more and more. One day, he was very distressed. He, how everything I have worked for, I'm going to leave here on earth and go away. And he stressed himself and he went through hoops and loops in trying to figure out what to do. And so before he died, he loaded his briefcase with two huge gold bars. I am sure he visited Dubai airport before. And he went on ahead and wrote in his will to have that particular briefcase locked with the key and the briefcase to be handcuffed to his wrist and the key to be placed into his graveyard clothes pocket. So his family who loved him very much, what they did, they exactly followed his orders as written in his will. So very soon he appeared at the pearly gates of heaven. And yes, before you ask me what happened to the briefcase, he had the briefcase with him and he had also the key in hand ready. So St. Peter, when he noticed this, he was very intrigued and he asked, hey, what do you have in your suitcase? So very proudly, the businessman unlocked the case with the key and he opened it and he displayed his two huge gold bars. St. Peter, seeing this, had this huge grin on his face and he said, isn't that special? You brought pavement, bro, he said. And sure enough, the businessman noticed past that pearly gates of heaven and he saw that every road in heaven was made of gold. And that man, needless to say, was utterly disappointed. I know that this uh, particular story may bring a little bit of chuckle to us, but aren't we all like this rich man sometimes? We put so much effort into accumulating our savings, wealth, investments, the real estate, even fame and many other things, thinking we are investing in our future and in the future of our kids. But in doing so, we have lost the very essence of why we were blessed of uh, blessed by God with all of these things. Why we are working for it and what does it mean for us in the context of a Christian life? So while in this accumulation, we have somewhere it seen that we have lost the complete art of the opposite of accumulation, that is giving giving in grace and how giving helps us gain more. So I have titled my sharing today as the grace of giving. And I pray that the word of God will help us not to ever be like that rich businessman to find out that what we have acquired here on earth as our precious treasure counts for nothing where it matters the most 
before the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, Jesus. So let's just bow down, take a moment and just pray and ask that the Lord be uh, present this very moment and fill us with his spirit. Yeah, let's just bow down and pray. Holy Eternal Father, Lord Almighty, we come before you. We thank you, O Lord, that you are a giver, Lord Jesus, and you've given us abundance. Father, Lord and Master, we just pray, Lord, as we even tackle this uh, subject, O Lord Jesus, that you will be in our midst. Father, we pray for your Holy Spirit, O Lord Jesus, that you will give us the wisdom and the discernment to hear what is on your heart. Father, Lord, I pray, O Lord Jesus, that you will, uh, Lord God and Master, help us to open up our ears and hear what you have to say. And Father, help us to focus on, uh, on your heart a word, Father, and keep away any, any distraction or disturbance away. Father, Lord, we, I also bring myself before you and I pray for your grace upon me, O Lord, as sinful in nature and human that I am. Father, I pray that you'll enable me to speak your word, what you have put for your people, O Lord Jesus, Lord God, I'm asking you to come forth, O Lord, in the manner that you have chosen. Nothing more, nothing less, O Lord, but except what is in your heart. Father, we want to thank you once again, and I pray that you will be the Lord over this time, O Lord and Master. Every second that we discuss, every second that we that we hear about, Lord, that you will take the precedence. Father, thank you once again for hearing us. Thank you for your presence with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so today we will be aiming to understand three things. Firstly, we will aim to understand what is giving exactly about. Secondly, to appreciate the different ways in which we can give. And thirdly, to understand and make a commitment to the discipline of giving faithfully and regularly as a way of worship. Now, God, our Heavenly Father, is a giving God. And we all know this. He loves to give, isn't it? Indeed, God is a God of abundance. And I was so pleasantly, uh, you know, touched by uh, Nelson's testimony today. Indeed, he is a giver of life. He's a giver of good things. And that's what the Bible says, right? Every good and perfect gift comes from up above, the father of lights. And so thank you, Nelson, for reaffirming that through your beautiful testimony that he is a giver. And we all can testify and say that God has given us everything that we need for life, right? He's given us our jobs. He's given us a means to provide for our home, our food, clothing, protection, mana health, mana family, right? And so he has also given us creative abilities or talents with which we can create wealth. But above all, God, driven by his love for us, gave us our best gift ever. Can anyone tell me what that best gift is or who that best gift is to us? Anyone, if you can shout out. Okay, I can't hear you guys, but I'm hoping that you and I are agreeing when we say that God's best gift ever to us is no one else but Jesus. Now, the verse describes it this way. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift when God the Father gave us Jesus. And so God gave his best gift to us. So what is this giving all about? Now, according to the dictionary, to give is to present voluntarily and without expecting any compensation. Now, I was a little taken aback when I learned this, because even though I knew the meaning of giving, I was hit with the reality that most of the time, manmo is tam. Kani, uh, conditions to paatu, attaches to manmo is tam, na? And if we are being honest, always we give out of guilt, or maybe we expect something in return. Maybe at a later date, but in some form as humans, we do expect compensation of some kind. And so God the Father, by giving us his son Jesus voluntarily, without these conditions, is a beautiful precedent for us. That means a prior example. Aina oka adarshaniyamuga manaki eseni pamper ona, so that we can mirror him. And so different from this, from the human nature that sometimes 
మనుషులుగా as humans we fail to understand this concept of giving as our divine god does so if we were to look at giving as seen in the old and the new testaments we can see that the old testament talks more on giving that is regulated such as tithes and offerings but the emphasis we see in the new testament is more on generosity or liberal giving but one thing we can conclude is that the biblical giving is both voluntary and regulated but driven by an attitude of generosity let me say that again biblical giving is both voluntary and regulated but driven by an attitude of generosity so this lesson is not only for me not only for those who are sitting at the end of our hall on those sofas not only the people at the media not only the people at the middle of the hall but at the front of the hall it is for each one of us in all our ages so let us look at what god is teaching us today about giving now giving is a natural response of love and it is governed by grace now meaning hum baaki cheezon pe jitna dhyan dete hain like we have to care for our family because we love our family we have to go to our offices every day because we cannot take leave and we have to be uh, you know we have to show integrity in our jobs and when it comes to god we think bible study karna hai every day because i want to be right with god prarthana karna hai kyunki it is the right thing to do we have to work in the office so that mana devunni itar manushulu recognize chestaru ani kada then we also go ahead and we think are mana pillalki devuni vakyam manam nerpinchali why because we want them also to have a blessing right prati sunday church ki vellali because i love my family of church and i love the i love my lord too ila manam ento attiga aalochistam you know we think deeply with an attitude of love and respect for our god in the same way through this verse we can see that paul is telling us that we need to use the same traits in giving to but unfortunately we falter sometimes or we fail in this area or we neglect it because we approach giving as if it's a burden sometimes but or maybe we don't have the right attitude about it or sometimes we take it so light in these days of grace that we don't even want to understand it deeply from the lord's perspective and that may put us on the wrong side of christian living so today with the help of his spirit with wisdom and discernment let's try and understand this truth let's do that first by comparing how giving is under law versus giving under grace firstly we see under law that giving was a duty and that made us resentful sometimes isn't it and under grace we see that giving is a privilege which is voluntary and it brings us joy or khushi to share secondly we see that under the law we give the least bit required so that we can get god off our backs meaning oh god jitna dene ko bola hai khuda van ne utna compulsory dena hi padega nahi to blessings nahi milenge devud ki ente ivalo anta ivalsinde andi otherwise blessings aagi potai this is what was the understanding or the undertaking in under law but under the grace that we live today we are encouraged to give as much as we can and dil se to express our at gratitude to god for his love and for his mercy towards us and our families thirdly we see that under law we give in order to be accepted by god it was as if we are fulfilling some required condition but under grace we give because you and i have been accepted by god not because of what we do kyunki unki daya hai hamare upar but we no matter what could have done anything by ourselves to fulfill the prerequisitions or the conditions to be considered as worthy so in recognition of this our hearts are overfilled with joy and so giving should come within us from within us very easily but we know 
that is not exactly right right giving is hard sometimes so let's look at what are the types of giving to understand this topic better the first types of giving is tithes now the most common and known one even though we might not use this terminology anymore it is said in leviticus 27 and malachi 3 the 10% of one's gross income meaning not cutting down our taxes not cutting down our uh, our other bills and then whatever remaining but 10% of whatever we in, uh, income uh, whatever our income is as gross the tithe through grace is like a dedicated amount that we settle on from the heart in giving to the lord whether we are generous or not so we don't start with a condition in today's days of grace that ha 10% hi dena hai దేవుని పనికై పూర్ణ హృదయముతో విరివిగా మనం ఇవ్వాలి అని అనుకోవాలి ఖుదాకి కామ్ కేలి మే కుల్కర్ దూంగి జిత్నా మేరేసే హోగా బట్ వి డు నాట్ గివ్ యాజ్ అ టిక్ మార్క్ ఇస్ టు బి పుట్ అండ్ టైట్స్ ఆర్ టు బి బ్రాట్ ఇన్ టు ద టెంపుల్ వేర్ బి వర్షిప్ రెగ్యులర్లీ ఇన్ అవర్ కేస్ జీసీఐ ఇండియా సో దాట్ ఇట్ కెన్ సపోర్ట్ ద వర్క్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ and malachi very beautifully admonishes the people in his time to bring the entire tithe into the storehouse of the temple where they were storing grain gifts and many other gifts why because the priests and the people who were serving in the temple were dependent on these gifts for their lives now i know i know many will say why why are we still talking about tithes in today's time right but let's know that while tithes as a terminology are not emphasized in new testament except for a reference that i found in matthew 23:23 but a higher principle is to be followed and that is generosity is highly encouraged especially when we want to bring in money into the church of god as it is written in second corinthians 8:7 so we can clearly say that generous giving in the current days is motivated and governed by god's grace upon us and not the law so we are no longer tied on the law that this is what we need to give or this is how much we need to give but our generous giving should be motivated and governed by god's grace upon the upon each one of us the second types of giving is offerings now this is a free will giving that the giver decides for themselves and how much to give is totally upon the gift giver now the offerings let's bear in mind that we need to take into consideration our own income and liberality as it is said in this verse each of us should give what we have decided in our heart so this is a free will giving the third type of giving is alms now alms are nothing but giving as a donation or charity to individuals or groups who are in need now james 127 says that religion that god our father accepts as pure and faultless is to look after orphans and the widows in distress amongst us and so also we see in matthew 63 that it is encouraged to give to the needy so this kind of alms giving is a giving as donation or a charity to individuals or groups who are in need and the best examples that we can find who are very good at giving alms is dorcas and cornelius the fourth type of giving is faith giving now this is when a person makes a pledge to give a certain amount of money or makes a commitment in faith believing that god will provide for them to enable the honor of that commitment that is made your best example is hana do you remember her hana made a pledge that lord if you give me a son i will in faith bring that child into your temple for your service so she made a pledge so a pledge can be either a certain amount of money or a commitment in faith believing that god will enable us to fulfill now these kind of pledges are promises and these kind of promises should be fulfilled always as it says in the verse 
Now you should finish what you started, it says in 2 Corinthians 8, 10 to 12. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. The fifth type of giving is giving in kind. Now, there are two ways that you can go about this as and when prompted by the Holy Spirit. First thing is giving of ourselves in ministry. Now, please note that giving of ourselves is much more than giving our money, our resources or our possessions. It is giving of our time. It is giving of our efforts and using our talents into the ministry of the Lord, into partnering Jesus with the ministry that he has in mind, right? And so giving of ourselves is the first type of giving in kind. And the second one is donating our properties or material possessions to the ministry, just as the first church did. The early church, remember, the men and women there sold off their possessions and brought in their entire amount into the storehouse of, of the Lord so that each other may benefit and also it may be used for the expansion of his kingdom, right? Now, we have talked about what is giving and, uh, you know, the types of giving, but why should we give? That we should give, all of this, we all know this. But today, let's dig a little more deeper and try and understand this from uh, what is on the Lord's heart and what is he saying to us in specific, specifically today. So we can see that God owns everything. How do we know this? Psalms 24 1 says that the earth, everything in it, the world and people belong to him. Now God doesn't need our money or our resources. If we are being honest, everything that he has given us in our hand already belongs to him, isn't it? And, but he gives us an opportunity to participate in his work through giving. Therefore, we give. Why? Because giving is commanded by God himself. Now, Christian giving is not optional, but it is very essential. Now, this verse has a, a later portion too. And we will deal with the how to give in the latter part of my message. But if you look closely at what Jesus is saying here in Matthew 6, 2, he says, when you give to the needy or when you give to someone in need, not if you give. He used very specific words, when you give to someone in need. But conveniently, we have sidelined this important aspect of Christian living. Manmu Christavala Mante, Manmu Guppilu Vipi, Ekada Ivalo, Akada Ivadam Nechkoli, right? Not if we don't have an option. It is essential for us to give. Secondly, why we should give is because giving shows a priority to the Lord and it draws us closer to Him. We must make a conscious decision, my brothers and sisters, to make Jesus as our treasure. Not our real estate, not our cars, not our acquired skills and knowledge. Mana bank lo dach pitna bangaram kuda kadu mana treasure. Leka mana pillalu kuda kadu treasure. But please note that I am not advocating that we must not possess or own any of these things. God gives us these good things so that we may have a good life here on earth. But our attitude and priorities towards acquiring these. And having no interest towards learning or sharing or saving deeper rewards in the Lord are alarming, especially in our present day and age. And so we must learn to give because he matters to us, because we love him as he first loved us. The third reason of why we should give is because it is an act of worship and it pleases the Lord. Now, there are two Excellent examples written in the Bible. And both of these we know very well. First, the three Magi. Do you remember when Jesus was born? The three Magi came with gifts of frankincense, myrrh and gold. And they came, bowed down and they worshipped Jesus and the gifts were accepted. Secondly, the second example we see is Mary. She came with an expensive bottle of perfume. Now I'm sure it must have costed her a bomb in today's time. But we see that she came and she poured out the entire 
uh, perfume bottle onto Jesus and she anointed him and she worshipped him. Her best she gave and that giving was pleasing to Jesus and acceptable unto the Lord as we read in John chapter 12. And so giving is an act of worship and it pleases God. The fourth reason of why we should give is giving is an exhibition of God's character. He is a giver, as it says in John 3.16. Now, we know the desire of the Lord is to see us grow more and more like him. And if he is a giver by nature, God also wants us to emulate him by developing a grace of giving into our very character, just as he is. So giving is an exhibition of God's character, and hence we must learn to give. Fifthly, Giving meets ministry needs and expresses appreciation to God. Now, the verse here that Paul talks about is that good things, two good things, the needs of the believers are met and also joyful expression of thanks. Now, you and I as members of a church or a body of Christ, we might not be able to go out into the marketplace and further the kingdom of God from our homes or from our offices because we have a limited space. But there are other people who go on our behalf. There are pastors who go for visitation ministry. There are, there are many times that we help out one another, right? And so when we give, it meets ministry needs, whether it is for uh, within the church or outside of the church. And what does the giver then do? They express appreciation to God. And hence, giving is also encouraged in this way. Now, the sixth reason why we should give is giving is an excellent antidote or a remedy to materialism and an investment for eternity. Now, those of us who struggle with hoarding or if we find ourselves constantly comparing ourselves with others, what possessions they have, oh, they have an iPhone, I don't have. If we constantly find ourselves comparing about, uh, you know, comparing with others about what we have and what we don't have, and we keep distracted, distracting from the Lord because of our accumulating habits, then this principle of giving back helps us. It helps us bring back focus upon the Lord and how we need to relate to one another. So how should we give? We've learned about what is giving, types of giving, and why we should give. But how should we give? Now, the modes of giving are clearly outlined in the scripture for us. And so let's look at them. The first thing is we should give regularly and proportionately. Now, I'm sure Paul was alerted by the Holy Spirit to specifically say this. Because even in that day and age, he had that discernment that if we try and not put aside small amounts regularly, we will use up or sideline that amount that we have kept for something else. And we will use it up for the current need. Also, by systematic regular giving, it is the amount grows up to be larger than through collections made in one certain occasion, isn't it? This is why Paul tells us that we must give regularly and proportionally to set aside a small amount, how much ever we require and in regular uh, times. The second uh, way of how to give is we should give generously. Now, this particular verse, my brothers and sisters, has been misused and abused by many a prosperity gospel preachers. But our God has given us without measure, and that's the truth. And he longs to see us to give back to him, not because he needs it, but to look at our heart condition. And I have personally experienced that when we give generously, the Lord has always added hundredfold unto us. And so I urge you to definitely try this. Now, many a time we really struggle. And sometimes, you know, we cry before the Lord and plead with him, right? How do we pay for all of this, Lord? All of this uh, expenditure is coming at the same time. How do I, how do I do this? How do I pay for that? We really, then what we, what do we do? We close up our fists, trying to control and how we can manage, right? So much so that we cannot enjoy the fruits of our own labor. I've had a person who have counseled uh, before who's very 
a worry or a problem was about finances. And so much so that even in food, I know rationing chedu madal petted. This month we will only eat this. And that rationing of food and everything, he was so cringy with his, uh, you know, resources that it brought so much of dissatisfaction in every area of his life. His family was unhappy with him. But we need to remember, you know, how much we need to remember to practice in how much ever we can to give generously and see how the gates of heaven are open for us. One thing I must say is, we need to remember that while our motive to give is important, we don't give with the intention to get back manifold from God. But because it is in God's nature that he always blesses us manifold of whatever we give unto him. Anne Frank, a German celebrated diarist, she once said this, no one has ever become poor by giving. That's true, isn't it? The third way of how we should give is we should give willingly and cheerfully. The right kind of giving should never be under compulsion, never under duress or by response to a cunning device. But we must give uh, as much as we have decided in our heart. Fourthly, we must give sacrificially as it is written here. You know, sometimes we give, sometimes we do things. But when it pinches us in some form, when we give sacrificially, we understand the value of that particular thing, isn't it? And so when we give sacrificially unto the Lord, it is for us, you know, as we realize that the Lord has given much more than we have ever asked. And so it is encouraged for us to give sacrificially. The fifth way to and how we should give is we should give purposefully whenever we come into the Lord's presence. Now, when we give purposefully, we partner with Jesus into his plans and his purposes to be fulfilled. So there is a purpose when we want to give. So we must give purposefully. Let's continue and talk about what are the benefits of giving. Now, we've talking so much about giving, right? But what are its benefits? Okay, let's move on and see what is our first benefit. Benefit is giving brings joy and fulfillment to the giver. Now, our giving is not only a blessing to the receiver, but it also brings us a satisfaction and a joy in the Lord that we are partnering with him in his ministry, right? And so... Giving brings us joy and fulfillment to the giver. Acts continues to say that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so in giving, we receive back blessings. Now, I just want to say something important here. Over the many years, this particular spiritual discipline of giving has been frequently distorted and abused by many preachers. Because there are definitely many blessings associated with the grace of giving. But we need to be aware of the distortion of God's word, especially when related to prosperity. So that we can learn this discipline in the right way, bringing God the glory. Now, scriptures that are like these, that, that are there before you, have often been misquoted or applied without considering their specific context regarding the grace of giving and they are packaged and marketed as prosperity gospel using the sowing the seed concept. So we need to know that prosperity is not the end of giving or even the ultimate goal to practice giving. But the reality is somewhere down this line of giving in the days of grace, we have tended to have gone to the other extreme. And in a way, kind of sidelined the true way to exercise this important spiritual discipline as asked of us by the Lord. So I pray that each one of us today will learn this very important discipline. Even as we've learned, we've talked about, you know, what is giving, the types of giving, why should we give in the first place and how we should give and the benefits of giving through the scriptures. Yet I will say, let us still be aware 
very distinctly in our heart about the following things. We should be aware that we cannot arm twist God to bless us. The preachers who preach prosperity miss out on the importance of a life of obedience, of holiness and sacrifice. So even in our natural life, we cannot sow a rotten seed and expect it to produce fruit. Can we? We cannot. We have to bless with a, a, a blessed seed or a healthy seed, right? And so prosperity gospel preachers kind of miss out on this. So our attitude with which we must give unto the Lord is very important. The heart with which we give, whether it's tithes, offerings, alms, or in kind, matters to the Lord. And how much ever we would like to give. But our giving matters to the Lord. Secondly, we must be aware that we cannot match God in giving. Now, he is the sovereign Lord. And so in our humanness, even when we try, we will always fall short. And hence, his grace is so freely given through Jesus so that we can do what is right. And the right thing for us to do is to give regularly, proportionately and consistently in how much ever we decide. Matlab, bhale das rupay sochenge. Khuda ke ghar mein leke aayenge hum. Khuda van ke liye bas itna hi hai. Wo itna hi chaate hai ki hum us das rupay mein hi pratibad rahe. Matlab, committed rahe. In whatever we decide to give, he just wants to see us committed and he wants to see our heart. But at no time we give so that we can receive. So in conclusion, I want us brothers and sisters to take some pointers. So our first pointer is giving is a wonderful opportunity to demonstrate our love to God. And it is a delightful worship experience that every believer irrespective of age should participate in. Our second takeaway is it should not be a joyless obligation, but our giving should be a glorious experience to give back to our original giver. Thirdly, most important is we should, however, give of ourselves first to the Lord before we can give off any of our substance to God in worship as did the Macedonians Christians. So I want us to watch a very short special video from one of my favorite Christian artists who writes scripturally strong gospel songs and then we'll come back again. Giving is a condition of the heart, and I think why we give is, you know, is because of what God's given us. I mean, I believe, you know, that I believe fully that everything we've been given is God's. I mean, it's not like I give a little bit to God, but everything else is mine. It's all God's, and so giving is what we do. It's who we are. It's, it's who we are as people. I love worshiping God with my heart and just like expressing my heart to Him. But a way, a massive way of doing it is the resources He's given me. And you think about you know, I want to worship Jesus up all day. It's not just coming and singing. It's taking care of His people. It's taking care of His creation. It's taking care of His world. What you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. This is not just about, this is something you should do, a commandment of God. This is this is our heart position. You know, the scripture says, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so we're, when we say we worship God, okay, where's our treasure? Where's our resources really going? Or are those going into the kingdom of God? So, in the light of all that the Lord has taught us today, Let's personally do a self-evaluation. I encourage each one of us, including myself, that we self-evaluate where is our level of generosity in giving, whether it is offerings or tithes or faith giving or towards a specific ministry task. Giving is a condition of the heart and we give because of what God has given us. So let's reflect on what should be our attitude toward giving and bringing our offerings regularly and proportionately into the house of the Lord so that the resources which are collected 
can be used for the various ministry activities in the expansion of his kingdom. Or just to be a blessing to someone in need within our very own church or outside. Especially when we say we love the Lord and we accept his plans and purposes for the body of Christ. Amy Carmichael, an Irish Christian missionary, she came to India and she served for 55 years of her life. And she said this, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Isn't that what Jesus did for us 2000 years ago? And he demonstrated to us what is real love by giving all of himself. And all he asks of us is to follow his example. So my brothers and sisters, where do we see a need today? Whether it is financial or in substance, how can we give towards it? So as we practice this discipline of giving sacrificially today to worship the Lord and to tell him that we love him back and we show our gratitude to the Lord, may the Holy Spirit help us and minister to us throughout this week and even more deeply and convict us if need be to bring glory and honor through exercising this particular spiritual discipline of giving in grace. Be blessed to be a blessing.